Welcome back. Still with our news, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended a Suhoor banquet hosted by the armed forces in the presence of the Minister of Defense and Military Production, Mohamed Zaki. We have the details. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended a Suhoor banquet hosted by the armed forces on Thursday in the presence of Minister of Defense and Military Production, Mohammed Zaki. The event was also attended by Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces, Osama Asghar, as well as commanders of the main branches and senior military officials. During the gathering, the armed forces congratulated President Sisi on his continued leadership of Egypt, working towards the nation's aspirations and ambitious goals in building a strong and modern across all sectors. The armed forces emphasize their steadfast dedication to fulfilling their duties and responsibilities in protecting the achievements and capabilities of the Egyptian people. President Sisi in turn commended the efforts of the Egyptian state and its national institutions with special recognition given to the armed forces. He praised their contributions and sacrifices in maintaining high levels of efficiency and combat readiness, as well as their role in building and developing a force that safeguards Egypt's security, stability, and national interests. Furthermore, the President expressed his appreciation for the armed forces' support to the state's endeavors towards the development, construction, and progress in various fields. President Sisi extended his heartfelt greetings to the armed forces and the Egyptian people as Eid al-Fitr draws near. To regional news, the Rafah land crossing between Egypt and Palestine saw the arrival of humanitarian trucks from the Egyptian side into Gaza, carrying aid relief materials as well as goods destined for the Palestinians. Additionally, the crossing facilitated transfer of injured Palestinians from Gaza for medical treatment in Egyptian hospitals. We have more details in this report. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended a Suhoor banquet hosted by the armed forces on Thursday in the presence of Minister of Defense and the Rafah land crossing between Egypt and Palestine saw the arrival of humanitarian trucks from the Egyptian side into the Gaza Strip carrying aid relief materials and goods destined for Gaza. Additionally, the crossing facilitated the transfer of injured Palestinians from Gaza for medical treatment in Egyptian hospitals. It also witnessed a passage of travelers and students studying outside of Gaza. Relief and medical delegations also traveled the crossing for humanitarian purposes. In the past few hours, a total of 793 passengers arrived from Gaza via the Rafah crossing, comprising 10 wounded individuals, 16 patients, 76 companions, a delegation from the Doctors Without Borders delegation, three representatives from the Mercy around the world, and 40 Emirati nationals. Additionally, departing from Egypt to Gaza were one deceased individual, six members of a UN delegation, and three physicians from the Doctors Without Borders, along with 23 Emirati nationals, according to the Rafah border management data. Meanwhile, 245 aid trucks entered the strip via both Rafah border crossing, 59 trucks, and Karam Abu Salem border crossing, 186 planes carrying aid from several Arab and foreign countries and regional and international organizations continue to land in the Gaza Strip. al Arish airport traffic data showed that since October 12th, a total of 730 aircraft carrying more than 16,000 tons have landed at the airport. Welcome back. Still with our news, the government is following up on a plan to rebrand Greater Cairo as a tourist destination to the tourist experience, prolonging their duration uh, to around 12 days according of, instead of just a couple of days, according to a recent statement issued by the Cabinet. We have more details in this story.
The government is following up on a plan to rebrand Greater Cairo as a tourist destination to prolong the duration of the tourist experience in the city of around 12 days, according to a cabinet statement. This came after a meeting between Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli, Minister of Tourism and Antiquities Ahmed Isa, and other high-level officials to review the progress of this plan. The plan offers tourists three main attractions experiences in Greater Cairo, each showcasing different facts of the city. Greater Cairo, the Cairo Governorate, and some areas of the Giza and Qalyubeya Governorates includes renowned sites and archaeological remains. The three experiences are visiting the Pharaonic Cairo and its archaeological sites, exploring Greater Cairo's museum, palaces, and gardens, and visiting historical Cairo. In addition, Medbouli reviewed the plan for developing historic Cairo, which involves six routes. The statement added that Medbouli stressed the importance of leveraging Egypt's unique tourism potential, maximizing the quality of Egyptian tourism products, and attracting tourism projects. Welcome back. We're delighted now to be joined over the telephone by our guests for the afternoon, Mr. Aydal Hamza, our tourism expert. It's a very good afternoon to you, Mr. Aydal. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Let me start by asking you, now the Cabinet has announced that uh, uh, the government is following up on a plan to rebrand Greater Cairo as a tourist destination in order to prolong a tourist visit to Cairo and their stay to around 12 days. Could you tell me a bit about some of the boundaries of historic Cairo? How do you see a tourist staying in Cairo for 12 days and staying entertained uh, in all the different sites and historical monuments and areas to visit in the city? Yeah, actually, this is a very good uh, initiative from the government. This is actually uh, too late, too late, actually, because this, we needed a uh, strategy uh, uh, Egyptian tourism in Cairo, especially uh, that way. Uh, of course, Cairo deserves more than all the days. But anyway, right now, all, all the tourists, uh, programs and uh, schedules that they usually they put Cairo in two or three days maximum four days. Yes. But uh, a lot of actually to see in Cairo. Uh, we, when we talk about Cairo, we don't talk about just Cairo. We talk about uh, Greater Cairo. We mm -hmm. talk about uh, Cairo. We talk about Giza. Talk about Kaliwea. When we talk about these three governorate, actually there are many potential tourism destinations we can use to uh, prolong the, 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 the stays of the tourists in, in Egypt. Uh, for example, uh, we can talk about uh, Pharaonic Cairo. Hmm. Pharaonic Cairo, usually in, in all the programs we used to uh, put just one day for Pharaonic Cairo. Uh, Saqqara, Memphis, and the Giza pyramids. Mm -hmm. Actually, those needs like three days minimum. One day in Saqqara, or we can say one day in Saqqara, and there are many different excavations, uh, new excavations in Saqqara. New tombs were, were opened for visitors in Saqqara. Mm -hmm. So we need one full day to this area of Saqqara and Memphis. This is number one. Number two, or the second day, we can have a very, very uh, rich full day in Giza pyramids and all the areas which were discovered around the Giza pyramids. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Dr. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry. Let me ask you, I wanted to ask you about the, the, the you know, different archaeological sites uh, around the city that we've seen renovated and uh, you know, developed and as well have been already inaugurated by the Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli. What is the meaning you know, of interest in these different archaeological uh, sites? For example, we have the Babylon Fortress. Uh, we have uh, different other synagogues, for example, uh, as well as religious sites, the Salah Din Towers, Citadel. All these have seen developments over the last uh, years. Could you tell us a bit more about their importance and them as tourist attractions? Yes, of course. Actually, we do talk about these new things which were uh, discovered in Islamic Cairo, for example, the route mm -hmm. of Salah al-Din al-Ayubi Citadel. Yes. Uh, this, is number, this is one. One is the route of Bab al-Wazir Street, starting from al-Azhar Park till the mosque of Sultan Hassan. Mm -hmm. There is another route 
to see by the tourists is the Muizz Redin Allah Fatimi Street from the Muizz Redin Allah Fatimi until Bab Zuila, mm -hmm. Bab Zuila or the gate of of Zuila. This is also another another route Area. could mm -hmm. be visited during the tourists uh, stay in Cairo. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the religious complex uh, route from uh, Amr ibn al As Mosque until the Jewish Temple. This area is very rich area, has uh, historical churches like the church, the Hangi Church, the churches of uh, St. Sergius, St. George Church, the Temple of Ben Ezra, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Amr ibn al As mm -hmm. uh, Mosque. Mm -hmm. This area needs one day, plus also the Coptic Museum, mm -hmm. which is in this area also. So this is another one day. Mm -hmm. We talk about uh, uh, having a night from uh, Muhammad Ali Barast in Shobra uh, till the King of Farouk. King of Farouk very good uh, see those sites uh, corner of uh, King Farouk or the rest house of King Farouk and the city of Helwan. Mm -hmm. Passing by all the things of the river. And discovered on the right. Absolutely. Right, I'd like to thank you very, very much, Mr. Ayad Al Hamza, our tourism expert. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. Ladies and gentlemen, a short break, and we'll be back to continue today's edition of Cairo Local Time. Do stay tuned.